All right, Dolphins fans. I think you can probably already assume why I'm uh, wearing my This Team Makes Me Drink shirt, sponsored by your Miami Dolphins, because it's uh, it's Tuesday, August 6th. It's, we're on the Fins Up Network, and uh, sixth day of on-field workouts for the Dolphins. That's the, uh, that's the positive news for the day. First day with pads. Hey, media was in attendance. Fans are in attendance. We're basically just a handful of plays into a productive practice period, and then the news drops. The news that I'm sure you've heard by now, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about it some more here because I got some thoughts on it. But the Dolphins lose their first round pick in 2023, a third round pick in 2024. Owner Stephen Ross is suspended through October 17th, and he's fined $1.5 million. And as I'm sure you probably know by now, no evidence of tanking. The tanking allegations from Brian Flores – proved to be untrue. That's not the penalty. The penalty is tampering with Tom Brady and Sean Payton, speaking to Tom Brady as early as recorded, as early as off season of 2019, when he was in his last training camp with the New England Patriots, and then again in 2021, and then talking with Sean Payton without the Saints' consent. So let's break this down. What does this all mean? Obviously, the first thing everyone's talking about is it. there goes the insurance plan. Having the two first-round picks in 2023 in the event Tua doesn't work out. Sure, that is technically gone. Because if you think about it, if Tua doesn't work out, that likely means the Dolphins didn't have a great year, probably picking in the top 15, top 10 area. And then you've got the 49ers pick as well. Excuse me there. I don't know what happened to my throat. Probably uh, – Probably the drinks because uh, Stephen Ross has got me a little fired up right now. But, but that's now probably out. Obviously, it's out the window. The, the pick is gone. The, the pick has been taken. Theoretically, the insurance plan was the idea that if Tua doesn't work out, you can package those picks, maybe a player, maybe another pick down the line to try to get up and get the quarterback of the future if Tua is not the guy. Sure, that's out the window. And I don't honestly care too much for that because I I'm a two a believer you can see it right there <laughs> and uh if, if we have a good season this year that's not it anyways what bothers me about losing this pick is the fact that you already have a young team you've got a team that we have just been we've just been showered with all this praise recently with Tyreek with Waddle with Tua the brand new head coach the flashy offense the defense that's already solid and now all of a sudden you've got two more first picks in 2023 that you could spend on whatever. If Tua ends up being the guy, think about the luxury that is. You can still package them if you want a player, or you can build on what's already a young team. So that's where it really gets you. It's the fact that you lose that pick. And a, and a 2020, what's a, a 2024 third rounder? That's nothing to uh, to shake a stick at either. What did the Saints get when they got their um, oh, I'm bounty gate? What did they get? Was it a second rounder? And this tampering charge, and here's the thing I want to talk about tampering. Every single team in the NFL is likely doing this. But what this shows is just how bad the Dolphins' ownership and management was during this time period. And it's okay as a fan, because I thought long and hard about this. It's like when you're a fan of the team, you feel like you need to go out of your way to support every single move they make. And that's not necessarily always the case. I always want the the on-the-field product to be the best available. I want the coaches to do well. I want the players to do well. But we have been dealing with incompetency in the ownership for a long time now. And you can see the playoff drought. When's the last time the Dolphins had a playoff win? 2000? It's a long time. That is a very long time. And at at some level, and this is the level, it starts at the top down. And this is just another example of this team blatantly tampering Thinking they can get away with it, you got a billionaire owner, one of the richest owners in the NFL, thinking that they can get away with it, thinking that they're above everything because of all that money you can buy people with, and the NFL coming down on them. And I do want to get to the practice. I do really want to get to the practice today because there were some positive things. But the one thing I also want you to think about as Dolphins fans, think about the timing of this. They just dropped the news of Deshaun Watson getting the six-game suspension blows up. Everyone thinks it's too light. You know what? The next day, let's throw this bombshell on top of it. Maybe that goes away. So timing is everything. I don't want to say it's the only thing here, but let's let's talk about that here. Um, I, I at least want to throw that out there as a talking point. 
But let's talk some positive talk as well, because I want to talk about how practice today started. Like I said, it was the first day with pads, but the first play of the group session, Tua to Tyreek once again. The chemistry that these two are showing so far is unbelievable. They had a play action rollout that went for 30 yards. Another play later, I think they connected for 20. In that time span, before all this Stephen Ross, Dolphins lose the draft pick news breaks, Jalen Waddell getting some action on an end around. We talk about the motion this team is going to use. Jalen Waddell getting the end around going for 10 yards. You've got Skylar Thompson connecting with Jalen Thompson on a, on a deep out where, where he's getting uh, with the toe taps. And then you also, you just got, essentially, you've got Tyreek and Jalen Waddell putting on a show until everything blows up. Sorry, I'm just still, still pumped up, still fired up about this. But Despite the early fireworks from the offense, we got to talk about the defense because the defense was the story of the day. They get the tip of the cap today because Josh Boyer was dialing up the blitzes the first day with pads, not holding anything back. You got to throw it out there. And the offensive line was struggling to protect. Melvin Ingram, uh, I just blanked on Good's, uh, um, Cameron Good. I shouldn't know that, my son's name. Cameron Good, Javon Holland, Porter Augustin, um, he had two sacks. All of those guys had sacks today during the team portions. Plus, there was multiple times where either Tua, Teddy, or Skyler were flushed from the pocket. The one thing we need to keep in mind, though, no Teron Armstead today for the team drill. So we have to keep some of this offensive line talk in perspective without one of the top three left tackles in the league. But we're going to need to see more from the offensive line. And whether that's adding a free agent at some point with the uncertainty with, with Dieter and backups behind Connor Williams. Great from the defensive line, great from Josh Boyer and the coaches, but we're going to need to see more from the offensive line because we can't go down this path again as Dolphins fans, us as fans, then as the team, but we can't go down this path again where the offensive line continues to be the weak link and holds the entire team back. But let's move on to the, uh, the orange Jersey wear for today. Cause that was Zach Sealer. And, and he had a great practice the day before, but he and Christian Wilkins getting credited with blowing plays up in the backfield once again today. So a great line from the defensive line, or a great day from the defensive line, great day for blitzing, great day for Josh Boyer in general. But let's hit some random player notes here because uh, Teddy Bridgewater was back to practice today. And some guys getting some uh, some return game work included Jalen Waddell, Edmonds, Noah Igbenogany, Devontae, Deadman, and Raheem Mostert all getting some action in the return game. Chase Edmonds had a big run um, that was credited to a block, a combo block by Liam Eichenberg and Connor Williams. He is appearing to be the Dolphins' lead back, but what's even better about that is, yes, I want Chase Edmonds to emerge, to be that lead back the team can count on. But if you're looking at that left side of the line and you're getting a hole opened up by Connor Williams and Eichenberg, if the Dolphins don't address the offensive line anymore, that's what we're going to need. We're going to need that kind of pairing to team up on these blocks to make that running game go. But let's talk about another rookie that is impressing because Eric Azukama, a lot of people had this down as the player of the day. Another long pass, another touchdown from Tua today, appearing to be the outright leader right now for those wide receiver four role duties behind Waddle, behind Hill behind Cedric uh, Wilson, which is great news. We want this guy, we want this guy to come in to take over, to take charge. I said it in yesterday's video. I want a guy like Lynn Bowden to pop in here. I want competition for this spot. Cause I don't, as you is making the roster, no doubt about it. As a fourth round pick, you are making this team's roster. I just, I wanted flash plays from as I didn't necessarily need consistency from the jump. I wanted consistency from a guy like Lynn Bowden. We'll have to see how that goes. But hey, if Eric Azucama is going to flash and be consistent, more power to him. Go ahead, conquer that wide receiver for job. Here's a guy that we haven't heard much of during camp so far, but Mike Gasecki caught a ball today. But this is something that we're going to need to monitor because if his usage as a pass catcher in, translates from what it is now in training camp through these first couple of days into the regular season, there's no way that this team is going to invest $14 million plus per year at the tight end position. So it's something to monitor. And maybe we should tread lightly on this too. I've talked about this before, but think about last year's training camp. Who was jumping off the charts every single day? 
it was Albert Wilson and it was Jakeem Grant. Did that happen during the regular season? No. Mike Gesicki was doing well during the regular season. Jalen Waddle was doing well during the regular season. Not everything we see in camp always translates to game action. So we have to keep that in mind as well. Can't go all in and say, hey, Gusecki, we don't, we don't need this guy. Let's see how it plays out, but definitely something for us to monitor. And one more note from practice today. The offense did finish practice on a positive note. Tua connects with Jalen Waddle on a seven-yard touchdown. One last thing before we finish up today's video, I want to talk a little bit about Mike McDaniel's media availability. He said right now, there's no concern right now regarding Michael Dieter's status for the start of the season. However, we're looking at a backup offensive lineman and still in that case. So I still don't rule out the idea of the Dolphins adding a free agent offensive lineman, or maybe they can potentially work out some sort of trade because the next thing and the final thing I want to talk about is Preston Williams because he came out Monday night and I don't remember exactly what the tweet that he put out said, but it's something along the lines of wanting more opportunities. And he took time in today's training camp afterwards to talk about that during his player media availability. Mike McDaniel addressed that as well. But what it's coming down to is there's so many mouths to feed. That wide receiver room is so crowded. Preston Williams feels he's not getting a fair shake to make claim for that wide receiver four role. And the Dolphins just have other players that are emerging. So if this truly Indeed. Uh, and Preston Williams, I should say, hasn't requested a trade yet. He said he's going to talk to his agent. Connect the dots here. It's probably going to lead to some sort of either trade request or being released at some point if things don't change in the very near future. But and it's it kind of is what it is. I like Preston Williams. I've been a fan of Preston Williams. However, if it hasn't clicked yet, and he's not a fit in this offense. He's not the yards after the catch, the run after the catch type of receiver. Maybe you just move on. It, it might be that time. And, and offenses aren't always made for everybody. And I know Mike McDaniel is a guy that can play to players' strengths. But if a, if a receiver like Eric Azukama can, can, can latch on here, if they can use a big body like Mike Gesicki, there might just not be room for a guy like Presty Williams, which potentially opened to a roster spot for a guy like Lynn Bowden or Braylon Sanders, one of these other guys that can latch on and stay with. But that's what I've got for today, Dolphins fans. A little long-winded. I apologize, but geez, there was a lot of news. Try to take it easy. And I mean, I mean, this team makes me drink, I'm sure. Go ahead, crack a cold one with me right now. It's just kind of kind of one of those days. But that's what I've got for today, Dolphins fans. Hoping for a little bit better news tomorrow. But with that. Fins up and we will see you guys soon.